Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to church today. Um, I look out today. Uh, there are a few missing, I've realized, and that's too bad because uh, they're going to miss out on how it all ends. <laughs> Today's my last sermon on the first, my first Corinthians series that I've done. Uh, it's interesting, I was just thinking uh, last year, if you remember, I preached a, a series that lasted all year long called A Walk Through the Bible. And I, I walked through the entire Bible in that year. And uh, this summer, I didn't even realize it, but I walked through the entire book of 1 Corinthians. I just started out in chapter 1. I was interested in what was there, and I just ended up going chapter by chapter. And today's the last chapter. It's chapter 16 of 1 Corinthians, and it's the end of the letter that Paul has written to the Corinthians. And as anyone that writes a letter knows, when you come to the end, you, you say your final statement, your goodbyes, your salutations, as we call it. This is Paul's salutation. And I've entitled the sermon today, it's called, Done With Love. Done With Love. And... You know, whenever you write a letter, I don't know how many people write letters anymore these days. <laughs> it's, I think it's a good practice to keep, keep doing because, uh, you know, you, you can write someone through email, or even that's kind of outdated, right? <laughs> you don't email anymore, you send them a text message, right? And, and that's a good you know, thing to do, but I, I like writing actual letters because it's in your hand and it's something physical they can hold on to and reread and... But when you write a letter, you have, there's two things. You have to first have a reason for writing the letter. All right, what's the reason? You can write a letter saying happy birthday to somebody. You can write a letter saying congratulations on your graduation or congratulations on your getting married or having a baby, whatever the case may be. Sometimes you write a letter for the reason of sympathy. I'm sorry that you've endured a loss. I'm sorry for the, the passing of a loved one. I'm sorry that you've been sick. I'm thinking about you. You can write a letter of encouragement that I'm hoping you do are doing better and I have confidence in you. Or even you might write a letter to your, your loved one, your sweetie, and say, I love you. I'm just thinking about you. But whatever it is, you have a reason for writing. And then when you have the reason, then you, there's the actual writing of what you want to say. How do you want to say what it is that you're trying to get across? Well, Paul in Corinthians, this is a letter. He's writing a letter to the Corinthian people. And I was thinking about it. What, what's the reason for his writing this letter? If we've gone through this entire letter together, this, I started right before the summer and we've gone through it. Do you know the reason why he's writing this letter? And what is his encouragement? And what, what is he writing about? I think those are good things for us to reflect about. We spent all this time, we, need, we should realize why is he writing it and what is he writing about? I believe uh, in the last chapter, chapter 16, the kind of the key, uh, if you could have put a button in the entire letter that Paul's writing, I believe is found in verse 13 and 14. I like to read it now. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13 and 14. He writes, Watch. Stand fast in the faith. Be brave. Be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. So there it is. He says, Everything you do be done with love. My Bible... Uh, has headings over each chapter and over even certain sections and even above every book in the Bible there's a, a heading that gives a description of what the book is about. In my Bible it says 1 Corinthians the theme is Christian conduct. How you as Christians are to conduct yourselves. And if you think about it the best way to summarize is what Paul writes here. May all that you do be done with love. Whatever your conduct is, do it with love. Uh, 
if you consider this letter, uh, we've gone through it, you know that all through the letter he's, he's re giving reproofs. That is, that he's, he's telling the Corinthian people the things they're doing wrong, and here's what you should be doing about it. And he confronts them, very blunt with them, about the things that, that they're struggling with and that they're doing wrong. If you recall, the beginning of the chapter, chapters 1 and 2, he tells them, look, I've heard that there's divisions among you, that there's contentions, there's fightings going on between you. So he confronts that issue. Chapter 3, he talks about their carnality. He says, I, you're still being carnal. He says, you're defiling the temple of God. Then he kind of moves on and says, you're defiling your personal temple. Your body is a temple. And he says, I know that there is sexual immorality among you. He says, I know that all these things, uh, he writes there, it's in chapter 6, he tells them things like, um, do not be, uh, see, neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, sodomite, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners, all these things, he says, and such were some of you. <laughs> he says, you guys were some of these things that I've just listed. But praise be to God, you've been justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You've been washed and you've been sanctified. All these things that you once were, because of Jesus Christ, you no longer are those things. So Paul gives reproofs for the things they're doing wrong, but he's telling them, look, through Jesus Christ... You have forgiveness of these things. And now that you have Christ within you, here's how you are to start living your life. Here's how you are to be a church. If you remember there in chapter number it's, uh, 12, he tells them about all the different gifts of the Spirit. How everyone is part of the body of Christ. And you have different gifts, different talents that you contribute that we as collectively as a whole formulate the uh, entire body of Christ so he says, consider all these gifts that you might have. But then he says at the end of chapter 12, but yet I'm going to show you a more excellent way. And you know what chapter 13 is, don't you? The love chapter. Chapter 13, he says, you can have all the gifts. You can understand all prophecy. You can speak in tongues. You can have all the faith to move mountains. But if you don't have love, you're nothing. Without love, you are nothing. And then chapter 14, he talks more about the gifts, but he says the very first, but pursue love. In everything you do, pursue love. Make that the foremost thing that informs all your other conduct. So why is Paul writing this letter? If you write a letter, you've got to have a reason why. I believe the reason is because he, he has care for these people. He doesn't want to see them fall into the things that they're getting into or the things that they're trying to come out of. And so he's confronting them and being very blunt with them about the things they're struggling with. And he's telling them in chapter 16, verse 13, he gives them very direct orders. I mean, it's chapter 16, verse 13. If you notice, verse 13 is not really a... A grammatically correct sentence is just a bunch of words. <laughs> he says, watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Just a series of, of words he says, watch. These are almost kind of like um, telling a soldier who's preparing for battle. Watch, be on the lookout, stand guard, be vigilant. There's many enemies about, about you, people trying to deceive you, tempt you. Be careful. So be on, be on guard for dangers that are about us. Now these are very good things for us too. All right, That's why it's in the Bible. That's why we read it because it applies to us. In our world we face a lot of dangers. So you've got to be on the lookout. You can't be dumb and not know what's going on around you. Watch out for the dangers in this life. Then he says, Stand fast in the faith. That is, be firm in what you believe in. Abide in faith. Don't give up your faith for the wisdom of the world. 
but rather abide in it. Yield to the influences of faith. When you face temptations, when you face problems, how do you overcome those things? Last week I preached about we have victory in Jesus Christ. And you know what it says in the Bible? That Christ has overcome the world. Be of good cheer. We have trouble in this world, but Christ has overcome it. He has overcome the world and we can overcome the problems we face in life too because we have Jesus Christ. And 1 John says, I know I overcome because I have faith. For I have... It says, it says, Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory. You have victory because of faith in Jesus Christ. Be brave. Be strong. These are very important things we all want to be because there's a lot of things to be afraid of. But are we to be fearful and afraid? I could preach a sermon and, and probably not get to every place in the Bible where there's a command that says, do not be afraid, but be strong and courageous. And I'll just mention this. Connie brought it up a while ago, but uh, this past week was the 10th anniversary since I've been the pastor here. And the very first sermon that I preached was out of the book of Joshua. I remember it because that includes the verse and I preached it. He tell, God tells Joshua, do not be afraid. <laughs> do not worry, but be courageous and be strong. And He says, for I am with you. And you'll notice that's the key in all the verses about being brave and being strong. God says, for I am with you. When you are in a time when you feel afraid, you feel overwhelmed, you feel fearful, realize that God is with you. And that's where your strength comes from. That's why we say, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because Christ lives within you. He lives within you and He'll give you that strength. You do not need to be afraid. We face a lot of foes in this world, a lot of dangers, a lot of temptations, a lot of things that try to knock us off our faith that we're trying to stand fast in. We can bravely and confidently stand up to those things because God is with us. He is with us through all things. Verse 14, Let all that you do be done with love. I mean, that sentence right there, he just boils it down to the very basics. All that you do, everything that I've been writing to you about in this letter, that has gone on now for 16 chapters, all those things, he says, let everything you do be done with love. To be done with love. You know, it's, it's funny, but it's also not funny. <laughs> But Christians can be sometimes the most harsh people there are. Uh, there is a, a big difference. There is a big difference between, between being firm in what you believe and being cruel. Uh, you can be cruel with what you believe and wealthily cause pain to others. And that completely undercuts the whole purpose of being firm in your faith if you're cruel to other people. Paul is telling us, and that's the main point of my message today, is whatever you do, make it sure it's done with love. You can be firm in what you believe in, firm in standing against the things of the world, but you do it with love. In fact, I believe that love is best demonstrated when it's facing the things that are against it. Uh, I read a, someone made the... Um, a quote, and I like it, it says, Love shines brightest whenever you're bearing with those who are against you. You know, Christ Himself told us we are to love our enemies. We are to bless those who persecute us. We are to pray for those who spitefully use us. Paul wrote in the Romans to the Romans, he said, 
Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. When people persecute you or are against you or give you a hard time, how do you overcome it? You overcome it with good. You love them anyway. <laughs> so why is Paul writing this? Because even with all the faults that the Corinthian people had, he still loved them anyway. And he's there to show them his love and affection for them. Paul could have been very cruel to them for the way sometimes that they behave, but instead he chose to do it with love. There are several instances in the book of 1 Corinthians where we see examples of Paul talking about love. We talked about chapter 13, let all you do. Uh, everything is about love. If you don't have love, you have nothing to pursue love. And here he is telling them, that all you do be done in love. Let's look at the very last few verses of chapter 16. That's the very end of the chapter. He, he's signing off. He's saying his final uh, salutations. It says in verse uh, 19, he says, The churches of Asia greet you. Aquila and Priscilla greet you heartily in the Lord with the church that is in their house. All the brethren greet you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. There's a lot of greeting going on there. <laughs> but he's, he's showing them all these people care about you. They, they, they send their greetings to you because they, they are concerned for you. And they care about you. And they want the best for you. That's the brotherly love and affection that is shown right there in that final greeting. And he tells them, I want you to greet one another with a holy kiss. What is a holy kiss? That is just an affectionate way of showing someone that I care for you. When we come here today, we normally we shake hands. We give each other hugs. We show affection because we, we care and love each other. That's why we do those things. And he's telling the people of, of Corinth, look at all these people who care about you. Have you ever had times in your life you feel like nobody cares about me? You know, that's a real struggle. Some people feel like oh, no one cares about me. But when we come together as a church body, we are to care about one another. And here Paul is showing, I have care for you. Look at all these other people that care for you. When you belong to the body of Christ, that's the greatest thing to know, that there's a lot of people that care about you. And we do. We care about each and every one that's here. Verse 21, The salutation with my own hand, Paul's, Paul has been dictating this letter. Uh, I believe the fellow's name was Sosthenes, it tells us in chapter 1. But here he, he takes the pen and how he finishes it out himself. He, he says, This salutation is with my own hand. And he writes this, If anyone does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. O Lord, come. You know, that echoes uh, the greatest commandment in the Bible. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. To love the Lord. And it tells us if you do that, you'll follow the second commandment, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. When you love the Lord God, it informs everything else about you. How you live your life. If you have love for His truths and His commandments. And if you have love for one another, it all starts with, do you have love for the Lord? If you love the Lord, you'll learn to love His people. He says, otherwise, you are to be accursed. If you don't love the Lord, how can you really love other people? If you don't love the Lord, you don't love His return. You don't look forward to His coming again. Because you are going to be accursed. If you don't love the Lord... You have no hope of eternal life. Your end is destruction. Your final destiny is in the lake of fire. Oh Lord, come. If you love the Lord, you want His, His return. <laughs> you long for His coming. Oh, I want to see Him and look upon His face. There to sing forever of His amazing grace. Yes, I want to be with Him. I want Him to come. I don't want to live in this old fallen world any longer. It's full of sin. That we grapple with sin and the struggle we have in our own flesh. 
And Paul, finally, he writes in verse 23, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The greatest thing you can say to someone is, Grace be with you. May God's grace be with you. Because it's grace that we need. Grace is the greatest thing anyone can have because in grace we have all that we need. All we need for our good is by the grace of God. By salvation we are saved. By grace we are saved unto salvation. It's not of works. It's simply a gift of God. We are saved by His grace. To wish someone God's grace upon them is the greatest thing to give to them. And he sums up the last verse, My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. My love be with you. He says, I want my love to be with you. My love in Jesus Christ. Yes, why is Paul writing this letter? I think it's right there. My love be with you. He has love for them. There's another verse I wanted to read to you because it gives us a clue about his affection for the Corinthian people. It's actually uh, in the beginning of 2 Corinthians, in chapter 2, verse 4. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 4, just a couple pages over. Notice what how Paul, he's writing to the Corinthian people like this. For out of much affliction and anguish of heart I wrote to you, with many tears... Not that you should be grieved, but that you should might know the love which I have so abundantly for you. He's saying, I've written these things to you with a lot of tears. Not to make you sorrowful, but to make you happy to know the love that I have for you. He loves them so much it moves him to tears when he writes these things to them. He has great affection for these people. I mean, he's the one that came there and shared Christ with them for the first time. And helped plant that church there. Yes, he has affection for those people. Think of all the things Paul went through for those people. He was beaten. He was thrown in prison. He was shipwrecked. All these things he did to advance the gospel of Christ to other people. Because why? He had love for God's people. He had that love for others. And how did he have that love residing within him? Because he loved the Lord for what the Lord had done for him. He had been, he said, I was the chief of sinners. You couldn't get any worse than me. And yet God struck him down with blindness on the road to Damascus and called him out of his darkness and into his marvelous light. And Paul recognized the love of God had for him by saving him, the chief of sinners. God, if He can love me, He can do it for you too. And that love was implanted within his heart. And now it's showing his love for other people. The love for the Corinthian people. Why is Paul writing this letter? He's writing it because he loves the Lord. And he loves the Lord's people. What is he writing about? He's writing about their Christian conduct. And how they should behave themselves. And how should they do all things with love. So consider what Paul endured to share the love of Christ. And also consider what Christ endured to share His love with you. That Christ gave up His glory in heaven. This is the Son of God to come down to be a, a man here on earth. He walked this earth, suffered persecution, and even suffered death on a cruel cross. And why did He lay down His life? He did it for us. He became sin for us. As we mentioned a while ago, that at great exchange, He took our sin to give us His righteousness. Why? Because He loved us. That is the great manifestation that even while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, love shines brightest when it endures and shows its sincerity and authenticity. Even for those who persecute us and spitefully use us. As we conclude our walk through 1 Corinthians, I ask you this question. If your life was a letter, what would it contain? 
If you were to write down the story of your life, what would you write? What would the letter of your life say to other people? Last week, uh, someone said to me, uh, I was talking to them, you know, I was, they were um, saying something to me about being a pastor for 10 years. <laughs> and uh, they said, our church just got a new pastor. And they said, all I wanted... He said, all I want out of that person is this, that they show me what love is. Don't just talk about it, show it to me. <laughs> and I thought, that's pretty good. We can talk about a lot of things, but if it's sincere, it's in your heart, you'll show what love is. Your life will show the love of Christ to other people. And I think that's what Paul, his life, he's right, he wrote this letter on, on, uh, with ink and paper, but really his life was that letter. His life was this letter he's writing. He says, look at me, what Christ did for me. And He can do for you in your life too. So may all that you do be done in love. For you are saved by God's love for you. Now you should share that love with other people. Let all you do be done with love. I ask you to please bow your heads with me for a word of prayer. Our gracious and kind Heavenly Father, I come before you today. I'm thankful for all you do uh, for me and for this church and how you've shown us great love, Father. You showed it that love so much that you sent your only begotten Son. That whosoever should believe upon him will not perish but have everlasting life. And so I thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. And I pray. Lord, that we would remember to do everything we do with love. That we should never be cruel or mean, but rather we should reflect uh, Your love for us and let our love shine brightly. I pray for my loved ones who are caught up in the world, who are living for the world, who are in the miry clay, in the pig pit of this life, that You would be gracious and merciful to them, Call them out of those, that darkness and into your marvelous light. And they'd return to you. I pray your blessing upon us today, the remainder of the Sabbath day, and for uh, this week moving ahead. I pray all these things in your name, your Son, Jesus Christ, do I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.